Okay, so this episode Blitzkrieg is your big race to the finish, yeah? So just be a lot of attention, just by introducing the show only. No need to mention anything else, okay? Happy? I Actually, no. After that last intro video, I, I don't feel hesitant now to talk about like subscribers and Patreon accounts. I, I, the way that went down, I didn't feel like a sellout. So yeah, you guys are like my ninjas, man. Let's do it. Let the magic begin. I'm ready. Um, What? Honestly, be giving up trying to tell if you're being serious or not. He's not. I actually have no. No, idea. I was being serious. I was being serious. We're we're still we're still friends, right, guys? That's a that's a really long pause. Intercom, the intercom broken. All right, so we have a rather important day happening here, but uh, so the guys are continuing to work on our hanging roof over the over our curved outdoor kitchen, but. Um, I was sitting in there this morning and realized um, I appear to have forgotten about the ugly turd still remaining in the yard. That's our gazebo, but I kind of wanted gone from the beginning. But let's just let's say it served us very, very well over the winter time because this baby has been our office, and uh, but it's become such a part of our home that I realized we have to kind of now make that look like everything else. So, but today really is all about what we've been waiting for for a very long time. And that is what's really gonna be going down in the room behind me over here. And that is a little bit of a golfing. The HD golf boys are here. The simulator is going in as we speak. The party is officially about to begin. While we might be getting close to golfing party time, where people will be swinging clubs inside a room with glass walls, you could say that there is more prep work to be done than just installing fancy electronics. That's where Curtis comes in. He's not only installing high-end hardware, but also making sure that hard balls don't end up installed into anyone's forehead. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. It is you, Curtis. How you doing, man? Uh, why is there, why is there a big, a black screen here? I was expecting a white screen. Uh, so this is one of three screens? Okay. So basically we're saving the back wall and it's all the def ball deflection stuff on the ball from the oh, back and hitting you in the Oh, head. okay. And so what are these guys? Uh, this IP camera setup with infrared technology. We got some AstroTurf going in, pit mat and stance mats, and, and club data module, projectors, and touch computers, screens, all kinds of good stuff. But today is framing and safety day. Yeah. Right, man. Mm -hmm. Soon we'll be playing golf. That's Soon it. I'll be able to show everyone just how terrible of a golf I really am. But even if I forget, the numerous cameras installed throughout the room to analyze every bad swing I take will remind me very quickly. The computer will then tell me what I'm doing wrong and how I can improve. It'll be just like having Steve around. All right, our uh, simulator is taking shape. We got turf on the ground, we got a screen on the wall, we got baffles over our heads. All this is to uh, protect golf balls from hitting people potentially standing here. We got the camera and the projector yet to go in, but all of these components are all leading here to the uh, to the headquarters. And this is a massive maze of wires right now that looks a lot like the inside of my brain. And uh, this is all gonna get sorted out. This is where the receiver and the computer's gonna go. But as of right now, with the roof of our gazebo getting started, and with this baby getting fired up tomorrow, we are officially entering into the final stage of this project. You can also play soccer on this. I think I'm gonna take a ceremonial first kick right now, just like David Beckham. <laughs> that actually really hurt my foot. <laughs> ah. I may be safe from ricocheting golf balls in this simulator, but there is clearly no protection against using parts of my body to attack one. So with the last of our baffles going in, our tee box turf going down, and the last camera going up, we are prepped for our final major component, the projector, which is what is really going to transform this four-season room into just about any exotic golf location you can imagine. We are now powered up, lit up, and even teed up, and just about ready to see what this baby can do. But not now, naturally, as I have to again exercise a little adult patience. Where the hell is Troy? Troy's big toys may be here, but no Troy. Am I aware that he's late because he's working hard on one of my other projects? Yes, but I really want him here now, because I have other important things to do. When the landscaper doesn't show up on time, 
all that you see is the carnage that, uh, that they leave behind with their big machines. We all know that's just jealousy. But it's kind of important that Troy does get here because today is Hot Tub Moving Day and I've been waiting to move this to its new home over here uh, for about 17 years, which is kind of how long it feels like we've been here. So uh, that's gonna happen today after he places all the armor stone on this side. So you're gonna be able to kind of, like the tub's gonna feel like it's buried inside all the stone, which is gonna be really cool. But I don't mind that he's late right now because today is the day that we flip the switch and turn that simulator on for the first time. So um, I'm gonna be, gonna be playing. Playtime. Playtime. Now that I think about it, did I even tell Troy about the tub move today? Oh well. Nice. All right. Oh yeah. Looks oh. good. Oh hell yeah. Yes. This <laughs> is the sh I love it. Shall we do this? We shall. So, seeing it at the warehouse and seeing it here is a totally different world. So I think we've established that it does work for the room. I think we nailed it. It's a perfect fit, looks amazing. Uh, this, is, this is perfect. Simulators in general have been around for a, about 30 years now. What, 30 years? Yeah, more than you might think. I, I, would ne I would never have guessed that. Well, but the thing is, 30 years ago, they weren't like what they are now. They, it, was, it, was like a, it was like Atari. They, it was like Atari <laughs> golf simulator. Old school. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. That would have been terrible. I know that part of the magic of the game is the fact that it can drive you almost to the point of a psychotic rage, right? It's been known to do that. That's the game. It's like, I, I hate golf, I hate golf, I hate golf. Hey, nice shot. I love golf. Let's load up Pebble Beach number seven, put famous hole, golf hole. Put a hole on, put a hole on. Thing, yeah, that looks like it's aiming towards the hole. Let's see if this does what I do in real life. Oh, oh, that's actually a pretty decent shot. Come on, baby. On the green, first shot. So the accuracy is there, the realism is there, and, 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 and so it legitimately you can be playing all winter long in your house and actually get better because you'll be swearing as, at, as much at this screen as you would on the actual golf course. Well, if you keep hitting them that well, then uh, maybe no. not, but. Are you, are you, uh, did you actually stop to do hand puppets? And you say I'm ADHD, what? <laughs> Dude, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Wait, wait. I'm in, I'm in. You have distracted everyone. I have a big, like, hey, get out of my face. I'm, I'm the, it's the worst hand, there it is. Hey, film, you we're, we're filming a TV show. What? Stop getting distracted with pen puppets. I am the best fake golfer ever. God. I don't know about you. Push, push the red button. What are you, man? A camel? It looks I don't. Like a dog. I don't know what, what I. I don't know what I am. <laughs> oh, record. I am not an animal. Push, record. <laughs> oh. God, God. Uh, hey guys. Yeah, yeah sorry. Oh, I yeah. think we're supposed to be doing some filming over here. I, I know, but it's, I didn't know we could do hand puppets as accurately. It's pretty good. It's like, okay, come on. We've got to film now. Let's go. Cool. <laughs> Robbie now knows that he can add yet another cool feature to his brochure. And speaking of cool features. Okay, now that we have our shelving locations locked and loaded and we have the actual support bracket in place, um, now it's actually mounting our shelves. So nice. So, uh, so Dan has, has cut out the actual shape of the shelf that we're gonna be mounting into place with the wiring in behind. And so the goal is to create this look where it looks like the shelving is coming right out of the stone. And so I'm gonna put that piece into place. It's all straight lines. Here we go, baby. Let's see it and see if she fits. Whoa. Now look at that. Tell me that that is not a sweet look. So when the lights are on, as you can see, Mike has got the lights all hooked up over here. The light shining down on the stone is a look that is as beautiful as a poem in, in June. Uh -oh. That's the best I can come up with on short notice. Do you want to know who else is beautiful? Troy, who also on short notice dropped everything on my other side to come move the tub, even though he wasn't scheduled till tomorrow. 
I don't think he needs to know about my little rant earlier. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. Of course, by the time you're watching this, so will he, but that's future Paul's problem. Right now, we've got to move all of the remaining stone pavers that have been stored at the side of the house out of the way in order to make room for our hot tub transfer. Now is the time to clear absolutely everything out because after today, Troy will be laying down the new sod, which will return this part of the yard to a luscious lawn as opposed to the rutted battlefield it has been for months. And now that our natural gas line under the deck is all hooked up for our outdoor kitchen, I'm glad that I remembered something today. And that's getting Troy to fit in the final piece of our armor stone skirting puzzle rather than trying to lift this in by hand. I'm quite sure that would have had a negative effect on my golf game. All right, so the moment has finally arrived. It's been uh, it's been a number of months. Last time we moved this, it was the fall, and uh, some time has elapsed since then. But uh, this poor girl's been sitting here all by her lonesome for all through the cold winter hibernating, and uh, we're now about to pick her back up just as easily and as simply as we did the first time many moons ago. And uh, it's gonna go just as beautifully, just as smoothly. We got a, a, the base all prepped for it, and, uh, and I, I believe that Troy has only gotten better on the machine since the last time we moved this. I declare and speak into existence that this tub will go from here to here and no incidents shall take place. You, you should get into landscaping. You really should. You have a gift. You should, you should do this for a living. I swear to God. So now that it's in place, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some other pieces of armor stone. We're gonna build up a staircase on this side, very similar to the other side. So when you walk out this door, you'll be able to step up, jump into the tub, and you can already tell with the, with the raised walkway here, this very, very large tub, which is high up, it's a big girthy thing. That's one thing about these tubs is that they, they, if you don't design them and put them into place properly, they just feel like monsters. But when we're done, it's gonna feel like it's sunk into the landscape. The walkway back here is raised. It's gonna take that kind of girthiness out of it. Now we're just gonna get the electrical hooked up, fire her back up. And then uh, I'm gonna go have a, a single malt scotch. Or three. With the completion of our soft and our flashing, we're now working our way around the lower perimeter to install all drip edge and fascia. At the same time, we've got our upper hips on and we will now proceed to install our roofing system. But you know what, Mikey? We'll always know who's got the muscle. All right, we have ourselves an absolutely sweltering hot day. Uh, so hot that I'm actually experiencing boob sweat and immense back sweat. I may have overdressed. So the irony is not lost on me that uh, Brian, my gas guy, is here on this day. He's been waiting around for a long time. He does a lot of that waiting around. I tell him to hurry and up and get here and then he waits uh, until I'm ready to actually give him something to do. Uh, but what he's going to be doing is putting in fire features and uh, our two fire features have shown up from ARD and they're awesome but on the day that we need them the least but uh, so we're going to open these babies up right now and have a look at them for the first time and then uh, and then poor Brian can finally do his job he's been waiting a while oh shit oh that's not too bad you guys got this keep it look Brian we have something for you to do all right, let's see. This is the one for the grass. Nice. It's been asked a number of times, what's with the big uh, yellow uh, thing sticking out of the lawn? Uh, so <laughs> this, is a, this is the conduit, actually, where we're gonna run the gas line through. This is where Brian's gonna do his magic. And uh, this tells you what a little foresight could do. So uh, a number of months ago, it feels like years ago, <laughs> Brian actually ran this conduit from here to the gas line that's under here. And uh, so now, instead of ripping up all the grass, we're just gonna run the gas line right through it and hook it up because somebody was thinking. I wish I could say it was me, but it wasn't. It was Brian. So he has a lot of time to think when he's around me because he's usually staring off into the forest waiting for something to do. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> now that my gas issue is solved, there is still the serious matter of my crack problem that I still need to deal with. So welcome to the uh, headquarters of my anxiety. 
uh, our outdoor kitchen, which you can see is now torn apart completely, uh, is about to have our very troublesome countertops replaced. So as you recall, we uh, discovered a crack. Not important to get into how the crack got there. All we know is that we've had to fix it, but stuff like this doesn't get fixed overnight. It takes a long time to now put a very complicated countertop back to, like this into development and production, and uh, it's on its way in as we speak. But the domino effect has been, we haven't been able to hook up the barbecue, the electrical, or put our post covers on because none of that can happen without the countertop getting put in. That's the one factor. The secondary factor is that this has had a psychological effect on Sanjay and Rajma because for them, two months ago, they could see the finish line. It's like, it's right there, we're so close. And then all of a sudden, that finish line just kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. So I'm trying to not only counter, good pun, what's happening here, but the psychological factor as well, which means that uh, I need to go see my, my therapist just to calm down. But right now, I feel like no amount of therapy will help me if this doesn't go smoothly. I swear to God, this countertop is as valuable to me right now as my own children. I almost feel like I don't even want to touch it, just in case, in case the jinx is me. You're doing very well. You're all doing very well. Please, just say a prayer right now that this thing just goes in, one shot, no problem. I can't take any more drama. If there was ever a situation where I needed to stay enthusiastic on the job site, it was over the past few weeks knowing I had to replace the countertop. And to be honest, I did a fairly good job putting it out of my mind, which was really important since I didn't do such a good job during the other calamities on this project where my stress levels affected the morale of my crew. It's so important to maintain positivity during stressful situations, otherwise the tension can affect the project in a negative way. And if you consider the fact that Mo made the replacement countertop in record time, I have every reason to feel optimistic. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I'm giving myself a pep talk right now. One down, one down, one down. Because as well as I did keeping my spirits up these past few weeks, I'm not sure that I will be able to keep myself from having a meltdown of apocalyptic proportions if anything goes wrong today. When we are only a day away from finally being able to present the finished project to Sanjay and Rajma. In all of the excitement, I almost forgot that a third countertop is also here, which finishes our indoor bar. It is a cakewalk in comparison to install, not to mention a nice distraction. But at the end of the day, our cracked counter is gone, the new one is in place, supported, secured, and complete. And I am experiencing relief of astronomical proportions. You have no idea how happy I am to see that done. Okay, you guys can just finish. I'm gonna go have a nap on that couch over there. <laughs> God help me. It's done. Thank you. And with my first peaceful sleep in weeks, I am re-energized for one last push to the finish line. We are at our final of final days. We have Troy, John, and the gang are here, and we're doing all kinds of planting. We got Rymar showing up this afternoon. We're putting in all of our rubber mulch, and we have furniture showing up, and a number of other finishing touches as well, and they all have to be done today, because there is no tomorrow. It's today. Or it's death first. We're almost there. Hey, Paul, how's your progress, man? Well, we're all ready for the last. Just about ready? It's, it's all ready to go? Yep. Okay, so now that you're, uh, now that you're seeing the settling of the armor stone here, do you feel confident that this armor stone is settled? Very much so. Okay, because you're the one that freaked me out about being about mounting it to the wall. Have you ever had it? Have you ever had the glass mount to the wall and then the stone sink and it breaks? Um, yes, uh, the deflection is very important. This stone has been here for forever and a day. Yep. Uh, it I've feels been, like that. I've <laughs> been back here twice to measure and level this out, so it's not moved. Okay, because it obviously looks way better having the glass disappear into the brick without having to put another post here. If it breaks, can I can I blame you? Yes. That's sweet of you. With Paul willing to take a weight off my shoulders, I'm all the more energized to unload a very anticipated delivery. And haul back our gorgeous outdoor furniture, which is really gonna give the whole area a massive visual boost. But just like our deck railing, I didn't want the needed guards for our walkout basement to be anything more than subtle in order to not draw the eye away from the rugged armor stone features while allowing unhindered views of the tub from the walkout basement. These glass rails will also reflect natural light into the basement through the large glass panel on the new door. So with the last of the furniture being hauled back and put into place and our gas fire features ready to glow, our attention to detail is paying off. Except for the one thing I neglected to think about. So I'm here in our uh, beautiful Rymar putting green, which is not looking so beautiful at the moment because it's covered with uh, grass shavings from the neighbor mowing the lawn next door, which I didn't take into account. So uh, 
So we had a uh, we had a strokey beard meeting with the boys, uh, well except for Jordan, and came up with the idea of uh, incorporating something that is seen nowhere else on this project, and that is six foot tall bamboo screens. And we are about to see whether this idea of putting it all along the fence line is going to look fantastic or like a colossal stupid idea. Yeah, I am totally as strong as Jordan. Not even close. These are heavier than you think. <laughs> With the existing chain link fence not allowing for any privacy, these panels should work great. But I'm not counting my chickens just yet. So we yeah, definitely want to see, it, it's kind of hard to level bamboo because it's not uh, exactly straight. We can eye it up to the house and behind. So far the theory is holding water. We'll see. I like the dark color contrasting with the, uh, with the, green, of the, gr with the green of the green. Yeah. It doesn't smell like, it's not like cedar. Cedar's got like a nice sauna type no, smell. This it. smells a little bit like okay. there you go. Okay. ass. Sure, then. Yeah. Here, can you check the Not level? that I find. No, what? Find uh, just... Jordan, do me a favor. Level. Let me see what the fence is doing that way. It looks like it's leaning that way. My only concern right now is if the weight of the bamboo is actually putting like a lot of pressure on the fence. Yeah, it looks like a little bit. We'll have to see. We'll see how that how that's going to work out. What the hell is that? What the hell was that? Where's your freaking shirt? What? Put your freaking sh Wow. I thought I felt old when I woke up this morning. Now I feel old and fat. That's great. Yeah, Thanks, Jordan. Thanks for that. So now that I'm counting Jordan's six pack rather than chickens, I'd say it's a good time for some therapeutic gardening. Okay, Nancy, your last name is actually Nancy Green. Correct, correct. It, and, and my company name is Green Art Landscape Design because my name is Nancy Green and what I do is art. Well, I think that says it all. I know we're dealing with some shade issues here. Mm -hmm. Rejma has given a vision of what kind of plant she wanted, and it's your job to figure out which plants are gonna suit the different locations. So what have you chosen for the shaded area? Well, so we've got uh, begonias in here, which will tolerate this shade. These are Riger begonias. She also gotcha. wants flowers that are gonna keep flowering all summer long. So this variety of begonia flowers Great. continuously. And over here in the sun area, what have you chosen here? What the heck are those? Uh, those are corkscrew sedges uh, or rushes. They're wow. really weird. Again, she loves flowers, so I've got hydrangeas that'll Beautiful. start flowering really soon. And of course, every garden has to have a peony. So that's a peony. I mean, that's a, it's a rule. It's a rule. It's one of those gardening rules. If you've got a perennial rules. garden, you have to have a peony. Otherwise, your friends will come over and judge you. Did we not salvage some of these from we the original? We did, we did. Th those were salvaged and split. No hostas were harmed during the filming of this show. <laughs> Look at the hosta. See, it's alive, it's well, it hibernated, we took care of it, and it's going into its new home. This is gonna fill this area out nicely. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I guess the next thing we gotta do is just put them all in the ground. Put them in, sure. Sounds easy enough. With our tranquil plants livening up our garden beds, I've chosen to go with black rubber mulch over regular mulch throughout. Not only does it look great, but it stays looking great for much longer and saves landfills from filling up with rubber car tires. So with Troy's gardens now complete, so are we. Which after all we've been through on this project, calls for a much deserved bonding moment. Because as of right now, we are officially done. Nice. Hand hug. Now that we are finally crossing the finish line, I have to admit I don't feel like a triumphant sprinter raising his arms in victory, but more like a marathon runner who falls to the ground gasping for air. But as Churchill said, success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. And I can honestly say that even though I'm feeling battered from some epic falls during this run, it's only made looking at what lies across the finish line feel that much sweeter. <laughs> yeah, you're playing, he's playing Angry Birds. He's, he's very busy right now, you can't. Uh... All right, so what I need to know for this is Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, is that a toad? What? Is that a... <laughs> um, hot? A little bit warm, yeah. Not anymore. We're going to do a thousand yard stare into the future. And as far as we're concerned, you don't even exist. 
Right, here's how it's done. Make sure your glasses are off because you got to see the sole of your eyes, right? Get your, get your, uh, get your pout on. No, no, you're too smiley. You got to look a little bit more like, yeah, deeper. There you go. You would never have known. And the reality is you now have no idea whether anything is real. You don't know whether any of this project is real, whether this roof is real, whether the building behind me is real. You don't know if this is green screen. You don't know if I'm green screen. You don't even know if I'm not a cartoon character. Who's the thought? We're, we're done, buddy. Hey, what's up, everyone? That is officially 13 episodes in the books with one more to go. As always, a big smoochy wet kiss to Matt Chapstick Mantega from Sky Definition Motion Pictures and this episode's sponsor, Rymar Synthetic Grass, who have been absolutely killing it on this job, not just putting down lawns that no one will ever have to mow, but also rubberized mulch, putting greens, and even decorative wall art. I'm telling you right now, in the future, everyone will have a backyard made of synthetic grass. But not everyone, in fact only the rare privileged few, will have the ability and the pleasure of being able to work with a producer like Bill, who has the, the restraint of a saint, the stamina of an ox, and the patience of Gandhi to have been able to endure working with an ADHD pain in the ass like me. To quote Cuba Gooding Jr. and Jerry Maguire, you militant, but I got nothing but uh, love for not you. Necessary to give, give him a hug for me, will you guys? Really not necessary. Uh, right, yeah, uh, Karen's on it. Uh, not really much of a hugger. That, that really needed to be said.